Yeah, yeah, tell me my mind. 
like that so bad. It would be very bad. Very, very, very bad. Are we just gonna go first? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Um, She's not gonna make eye contact. No, I don't. She's gonna keep getting bigger. Oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> that's that's better. <laughs> Pastor Troy. It's an honor to have all you here today. Today we have one goal. To lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have a second one too. To have unity in the body of Christ. Let's worship now. Okay. <laughs> 
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hi, so just a self, little self-introduction. Uh, my name is Ding. I'm a senior at Perriman High School. Um, so, you know, this is my last year. Anyways, so today I've been given the honor to um, do a little presentation over my history, uh, Chin history. And I'm just going to share the culture, the food, clothing, things like that. I think that'll get to know, let us know each other a bit more. Um, so, I get, so before I did uh, this presentation, um, I, I, had, I thought of two ways of making it. So one was just having blocks of text on there and then read it. And then through my high school years, I found out that that's really boring and people tend to just, <laughs> you know, just kind of sleep those off. Or, so I just put a bunch of pictures up there because, you know, everybody likes pictures. And then I think it'll be really interesting. And I'll just try to talk my way through it. And uh, I'll just do my best. If I don't know something, you know, that, that'll be there. But I'll share as much as I know. And if you guys have any questions at all, you know, increase anything, you can either ask me, you know, then. And I'll, if I don't know, we all, I also have, you know, elders out here. So they know they've been there. So I can always ask them and then we can get that figured out. So that's going to be how it's going to go. And let's go and just dive right in, I guess. So I think we should start from where, you know, where exactly do we come from? So most of the, adult, uh, most of the adults here, um, they're, the, um, they're first generation immigrants. So they're going to be the first of their family to come to the United States, you know, leave their home country. So I, I also came, but I was like seven or six at the time. So I was very young, very young. So, you know, I don't, I, could, I won't say I would know much about them, but from what I've heard and things, you know, I can, I can kind of get an idea of how things were like back then. So um, we, uh, well, where we come from is Myanmar. This country is located in Southeast Asia. So, um, so right there, it's right next, uh, near like some of the well-known countries like India or China or Thailand. So it's right in the center of that. So it's right in Southeast Asia. And you know, so right there, circled it. And within Myanmar, um, on, the, on the west side is going to be Chin State. And that's where we're from. So most of, in Indiana, there's like a group like Hakka, there's Guam. These are dialects and kind of tribes-ish. And uh, essentially, those are most of the people that you'll see in Indiana that are up very populated here. And we are from Atupi, which is by the same time as you see, but it's right in there. And that's the uh, Chin national flag. So that's our state flag. So if you notice, is it, uh, its color is you know, bluish purple and red and green. And you can kind of see uh, our clothing here kind of matches that. So, you know, there's a little connection there. And that's the flag of the country, Myanmar. And that's our national, I guess, our ch uh, state bird, which is a hornbill. All right. And then here's a kind of a closer look at the place, though, you know, geology, like the geography. So we have, it's pretty mountainous, a lot of greenery. So it's definitely a beautiful country. I think if you ask anyone here, one of my parents, they'll, they always talk about it, you know, like it's such a beautiful place. I wish we could go back and all that. And I'm like, yeah, yeah but I don't remember much. So I can't relate. Right. right. So. Uh, most of the mountains regions, uh, it's built with like corn because that's one of the foods that um, they, you know, really depend on and farm. So um, still a great picture there. So definitely beautiful. A lot of mountains and a lot of hills as well. A lot of hills. So I'll talk a bit more about that in a bit. But so culture wise, so let's sort of start with activities, just a little bit of things. So one of the, I guess, the, in any culture really, right, there's going to be so many things. So I can't really go into all of it, but you see that's one of the main points, some of the big popular ones. So we have bamboo dancing, traditional bamboo dancing. And I've never done this, and I don't think I ever will or can, because <laughs> essentially uh, you have um, people about, so like, uh, you look at the picture right there, like the men usually will have bamboo sticks their whole on either side, and then they'll kind of like move it like back and forth. And then that'll create, you know, like some kind of in the bamboo or just move, shift around. And then the females usually, are uh, the women, they'll go in and then start dancing to the beat and just look at it. And my hand-eye coordination is terrible, so, I don't think I'll ever get to do that. So, but watching it is definitely so, like really cool. I've seen it a couple of times. So it's really interesting how it's done. And if you know, if any of you are really interested or just want to see it at least in person, you can always search it up on YouTube or whatever. But if you want to see it in person, um, in the south side of Indy, uh, so Chin event, uh, then Circle um, Baptist Church, they do a, like a cultural event um, on February 19, uh, 19 and 20 every year. Uh, they do like a cultural event and it's like National Chin Day. So they'll do like fashion shows with all like the different tribes and their own little, you know, um, like clothing and they'll have like traditional dancing and a lot of things all about Chin. So if you're interested, you can always go, um, go there February 19th, 20, every year. And then on the side, we have sports. So obviously like there's a lot of sports um, like soccer and things like that, but our national sport is called Chin Long and or also known as Cane Ball. And 
this is also something that I've also played and it's it's kind of it's more painful than fun for me because so how they play it is they have their they don't have shoes on right and then they'll have this um ball looking at they I, I don't know what material it's made out of but it's really hard at, to the skin but it's really good because it balances well but at, like it's really controlled so there'll be men in a circle and you see pictures in here they'll just kind of bounce it back and forth and i've tried playing it my feet just turns red after the games so i i just i don't follow it anymore but it's really interesting now and as for clothing, I think if you look around, you'll see all the clothing here. Uh, again, the color really corresponds to the clothing they use. So it's kind of like gradient and variant of these colors. Let's say, you know, black, white, blue, red, and green. So I, most, most common those jackets were at the church, you know, um, or any like formal event will go. And there we go. And this is my personal favorite uh, slide. So it's not the food, it's not the food, okay. <laughs> Um, so I think, uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, so the three sisters are, you know, the, these um, like squash, corn, beans, they go really well together. So this is also in Myanmar, they grow a lot because it's really easier to grow, especially with the like environment there. And it's just easier to grow. So corn is a big one though. And also we have rice, a lot of rice fields. And we have like, in terms of, uh, they do also go hunting, but that's, I wouldn't say like very regularly, but when they do, you know, they go crabs, fish, shrimps, because there are also like a lot of water fields, or, sorry, waterfalls. So it's one of the other like that would be there. And as for community, this is the one I really like is um, they do this thing, uh, like the community there is very close tight. So like I mentioned earlier, like it's kind of tribe-ish, right? So they're um, in groups and each have their own dialects and things. So they're kind of forced to be together, you know, kind of work together. So one of the things that we do is during events or social events, maybe there's a wedding or like a, maybe like a, I don't know, Christmas or celebrating anything really. They do this thing where um, they have like um, banana leaves and they'll put it in front of you, right? In front of another line and they'll stack it on each other, kind of like a plate basically. And then they'll just put food on there, rice, um, I don't know, corn, meats, anything. They'll put it on there and then they'll have people sitting in front of each other and they'll just share it. You know, there's no like individual plates. It's just from one thing and they'll just share and they'll eat. And that's like the community that I, I found really interesting. And I've, I've had a participate in one of these. Um, that was when we came here, we celebrated, you know, we're getting out of there. So I, I got to try one of this before I left. So that was a really cool experience. And, and then this is just some of the cultural items and tools. So right over uh, to the far left, um, I think it's called um, in our language, so it, I, I'm probably messing it up. My parents are probably laughing. You can see them laughing. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, essentially uh, you would put uh, rice in there. And then you just pound it and then it finds make it mixed into rice flour or other ingredients. And as for traditional music instruments, we have you know kind of like a drum edge, um, <laughs> music instrument. And we also have water bottles. I think I think this is really cool. I've never had one, but I think it's just squashed, a dried up, and then uh, smoked. And I kind of like that because you know, here we have plastic bottles and all you know, environment, all that. And it's there, if you don't have to worry about that, it's just using it off from nature, you know. So I think that's pretty cool. So that's some of our cultural items and tools. And so that's, you know, that was about the, I guess, back there. So I think we're going to go into um, coming to the U.S. really, you know, and I think we should start off with why, right? Some of the main reasons why. And I think really after like, a lot of history classes um, I've had, I think um, there are three main reasons, I think most really in any country or anywhere uh, you see refugees go to different countries, usually because of government stability and quality of life and just like, you know, better quality of life an opportunity. So those are the three things. And as for government stability, I don't know if uh, most of you are aware or no, but you know, there's like, um, so, uh, so Myanmar um, is in terms of like politically, like the government, the people, there isn't a very good uh, connection between because people want to know a democracy or just a more free country while the government and military isn't so keen on that. They have other, other ideas. So there's just always conflicts going on and that causes, you know, more conflicts within the, like the people and their tribes as well, conflicts and there's wars. I think, I don't exactly know the name, but there's um, um, Myanmar, there's a war that's the longest running war in the world. Like it's like a civil, more like a civil war, but it's just a dispute that just has been resolved for the longest time. And so that's, again, government is just uh, unstable. So there's safety, there's a safety, you know, thing in that. So that's why my family, we came to um, America because that's one of the main points reason why. So as for quality of life, um, it's very normal for kids to like work in the fields, kind of like, you know, rather than take education, go to school, they, they're kind of forced to, you know, just stay home. 
because they just need to put food on the table. So, you know, they have to like kind of just forget about that and then focus on something they need to survive. So my parents actually, I, I recently learned this, is um, they never really like even finished um, like elementary. I think they dropped out third grade or something because they had to help out in the family to um, keep, uh, I guess, their farms, you know, uh, uh, animals tend to. So quality of life is definitely one of the big things. And as for opportunity, uh, most, most of the time when we talk about opportunity um, in, my, in our culture is we associate it with um, education. So as you see in this picture, it's education there. It's this education, but it's not like the best education you can get, you know? So there's a limit to it. And most of the, sometimes all the teachers are, they're not like as qualified, they would be as here. They have like a, a certain amount of knowledge, but not as strong. So the amount of knowledge that's getting passed through isn't that very strong. So, so that's some of the reasons why. So how, what does it actually look like though? So we start in Denmark right here. Um, I'd say uh, when it comes to coming to America, it's, it's a very long process. Usually um, in a total sense, it's about at least two to three years and then maybe more, but a little bit on that later. So we started in Myanmar up there and then this is the hardest part of coming to America. And that's in going from Myanmar to Malaysia. This is the hardest because you have to go through borders. You have to like all the danger aspect is all here. Going through, I'm like checking the forest and hang on. So, some of these are just some pictures you go through, you know, forest hours walking and uh, going, this is around, I think Thailand, uh, usually there's a boat, you know, so you have to use uh, canals and uh, use small boats and you have to do it like in a secrecy almost like everything that we do, all the like going from um, Myanmar to uh, Malaysia, it has to be done in secret almost because you don't want anyone to know that will bring danger. And this is one of the things I still remember is um, like, uh, during the times we on road on cars and trucks, we had these things and it would just be filled, like filled with people. Either they're going to a different country or anywhere, it would just always be packed. And I still remember at one point, um, we went through a really um, area like this. That's not there, but um, just, the, it was really muddy. Probably was muddy, so then there were too many people in the back. That was just a cramp, like too full as full as can. Some people were just hanging onto the side. So then the truck would just flip and then everybody would just fall out. And I remember hanging on for dear life to one of the rails. So luckily I hang on, so I was pretty fine. But yeah, people would just fall back. And one of the things is every time uh, we drove through a hill or the side of a road that was just like, wasn't working well and we couldn't pass through, everyone had to get out and just fix it really quick. And not just enough so that we could pass on. So that was one of the things I, I remember a little bit of. So again, this is the hardest part is going from Malaysia, sorry, from Myanmar to Malaysia. But in Malaysia, it's much, I would say it's not easy, but it's much more easier and much less danger. So here, and it's, this is where all the documentations and all of those things happen, you know, apply for um, a green card, all the things you need to get into the uh, United States. So, and my family took about two years. Some people take longer because, you know, it's not just a go there and then they give you a card ID. It's a process. You have to try again every year. And, uh, and also while you are doing documentation, some people, uh, we also have to like save money because it's not cheap, it's, I don't know. Uh, so from Malaysia to the United States is I think actually around halfway, like this halfway around the globe. So that's like at least five, six connecting flights. So that's gonna cost quite a bit of money. So we have to spend time there saving money just so we can, uh, you know, for the ride there. But after that, it's just going there. It's so much easier to go on a plane, you know, just get on a plane and then sit down, maybe take a nap. And I mean, there's like some stories in there, but I'll keep it short. So living in the U.S. Uh, now, and this, that's our church picture. So, you know, we took it and we came here, I think, the first day. And so we're doing really well now, you know. Thankfully, we've been welcomed here. And it's, we just had so many opportunities. And we're kind of, you know, taking those opportunities and we're better at quality of life. All the things I mentioned earlier, it's definitely much better. So my parents say all the time, is like, whenever, you know, I, I don't know, like, I, I don't want to eat something. My mom's like, you know, back, you know, it's, back when we had to work for this. And I'm like, Okay, mom, <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyways, but yeah, there's definitely, my parents, they're always so grateful, you know, they're always reminded, you know, it's so much easier to get things here. Like getting food on the table is as easy as just going down the road to like, you know, a uh, grocery store and picking it up. Um, and they always feel, I think sometimes they feel a bit, you know, a little, I wouldn't say guilty, but so great because there's still people back there, you know, who are so much more like less fortunate. So, but anyway, on the brighter side of things, um, as for opportunity-wise education, so my sister, Esther, um, she's uh, going to IUPUI, so 
I think that's like a few girls. She's this is her third year now. And we also have just two people. So Hin Hin, uh, she's going to IU Bloomington. So we have two people in college now. So, you know, that's great. I Hopefully I will also go to college next year. I don't know. <laughs> but that's, yeah. So that kind of concludes, you know, the presentation. But I also wanted to mention that one more thing uh, is the situation back in uh, Myanmar. I don't want to forget about that because I think it's really important that we know this. So apparently there's the conflict that's happening there. It's causing, you know, the refugees or people there to kind of ship, you know, move out of their homes for safety. And they're looking for places. And one of those places is like India. So in India, there's a Mazo. And essentially, the, uh, the initially, they accepted them, you know, you can come, come out, go ahead, you can come in. But once it became overcrowded, it's kind of hard to make, you know, there's a lot of group of people. They try to put food, you know, where they're going to live. It's hard. So, so some, most of these people are forced back to go in, like, you know, forced to go back into the forest and try to live off of the forest, try to like get forage for food, hunt for food. And it's just really hard. So some of these people would think they just can't make ship tents out there. And it's just really dangerous, uh, dangerous. So for that, you know, just ask for prayers and just, um, we also um, try to like donate as much money as we can. But, you know, if you guys are interested in that or just want, any amount will do it. Cause you know, their dollar is like worth a lot over there. So. For them, if you're interested, you can talk to one of our church leaders, but that's an option there. And yeah, I just wanted to, um, you know, not forget to mention that because that's really important. Something that my parents always remind me, you know, be grateful what you have now because look what's happening over here. This would have been you if we did not choose to come here and spend two and a half years, you know, getting over here. So I'm, it's real into my head now. So, now, but yeah, that kind of concludes my presentation of our history. So thanks. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they're taking it uh, from, um, I don't want to go back to the, uh, all the way back. Okay, so, and yeah, and so. Oh, so like, no, it's like kind of the border of uh, India, sorry. Okay, so yeah, I guess. Right, right on the top left corner right there, around there, right above Myanmar, around that area. So. Right up there. So yeah, Bangladesh now, but I guess it was known as India back then. But yeah, so right up there, and it's called the Mazo. The Mazo is like a different state in there. But yeah, they essentially accepted it, but there's just overcrowdedness. So now there's like accumulation, hate, and just too many people. It's always, you know, so it's always gonna be a problem when there's too many people in one area. So yeah. That's yeah, thanks so much, guys. <laughs>
Good morning. 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 Good uh, uh, we feel so blessed that we are so um be able to uh praise God together. Uh, we meet um, I would like to uh, say thank you to the Grace Church for um, welcoming us in this uh, church, and I won't. Uh, I don't really know how to say thank you word, but yes, I will try. Um, I would like to introduce my daughter first. Uh, me, uh, Esther. <laughs> <laughs> And my name is Pakap. Sang Imam, Tang Tum Uy Takai Lot. He went to um, third grade. He was able to go to uh, third grade and back in Burma. Uh, and I'm the current chairman of um, our BRC church. Uh, you ask me, I don't know. I don't believe that anyone who finished third grade in the U.S. would be able to be a uh, chairman. Yeah, BRC doesn't uh, require us for, uh, for a certificate either. Um, I'm, thankful, I'm grateful that even the grace church doesn't require it. <laughs> Um, before I say um thank you word, I would uh like to um read the Corinthian. Um on the Corinthian it says about the love. Three. <laughs> Um, love, trust, and faith. Yeah. And I think love is the most important. Um, whoever believed in uh, Jesus, um, we are the um, Christ together. Um, love's never in. There can be an end to um, education, but love can never end. Um, because of love, uh, we were able to, um, um, we are welcome here. Um, in, in this, um, you are a clean, beautiful church. When I think about the church in back in Burma, compared to this, um, I feel um, 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 I can't uh, say thank, uh, thank you word enough. Um, Jacob, if Quijico, Koa Kavingo, Raina, and Tong Wingo. When Jacob in the Bible, Jacob, when they face um, uh, trouble. But here, no Joseph, Ahona, Amina. Um, just like how God uses Joseph. Gaimi Ahamna. For us. Nami Hihona Kri. Uh, for us, uh, God used you guys. You guys are like Joseph. Um, I feel grateful. But um, May God be to the glory. Um, back in Burma. I would 
I would like to talk a little bit about the church. Um, the church back in Burma. Thor. Um, uh, it's at uh, the floor is um made out of bamboo. Even the chair is bamboo. Even the desk is bamboo. Uh, even the uh, yeah, everything is bamboo, made out of bamboo. <laughs> <laughs> it's all bamboo. <laughs> um, even, even we eat the bamboo. <laughs> uh, we live in, in the bamboo. <laughs> even if uh, the bamboo that we eat is in our stomach. <laughs> Um, uh, God bless us with bamboo. Uh, when we um, church in the church, uh, we got always a bit bad uh, mosquitoes. When we do the church, uh, we always face um, a lot of when the, when the church is long, uh, because we got bit by mosquitoes, uh, uh, worshiping God is not like that grateful. <laughs> that when we came to Malaysia, we borrowed a church. There's no AC. Uh, it's too hot. Um, when they preach for an hour, people would just go out. Uh, no one could listen until the end. But today, uh, right now, because of God, because of uh, your guys' love, uh, because you guys gave us this uh, church, we were able to uh, praise God um, uh, gratefully and may God bless you all. Uh, the, the church from our um, country, the ceiling, um, the ceiling were made out of um, bamboo leaves. Um, it was uh, inches long. Um, so there's um, a lot of mouse in there. Um, when it's daytime, uh, we do the church. At night, uh, uh, at night, uh, the mouse, they play. <laughs> Uh, before we do the church, there's, we always have to clean out the um, uh, yeah, who the, the mouse poop. <laughs> but now there's nothing; it's clean. <laughs> uh, when we go inside, uh, we would sit. Uh, for us, God is so good. For that. Uh, Back in our country, uh, the things that we have, uh, the sacrifice, uh, we never forgot. Uh, back in our country, even though the milk, it's not really good, even in the inside, they can they don't they can't have church. They go into the forest. Uh, they praise God in the forest. Therefore, uh, I would like to ask you guys. Um, from here. Uh, for my uh, country to pray for us. Um, we want to give them a chance, uh, uh, a place for them to pray, uh, for them to get a place to worship uh, with you guys. Also help us with prayer. Always pray for us too. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Do every day what 
Paul, stand one more time. Bless it. says and Luke writes in Acts chapter 4 and there is salvation in no one else for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Oh, my God. 
Thank you, everyone, for the beautiful music and praise of our Savior, the Lord Jesus. Oh, I'm sorry. We missed the last song. No, no. Are we sure? Let's let's do. No, I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I want you guys to teach us that song. <laughs> great is our God. Amen. We may speak different languages. We're born in different cultures, but today and forever, we stand united in the Lord Jesus. Um, Before we start this message here, I want us to think about what matters in life. I moved here five months ago. And my wife just joined me in our home that we're renting about five months, five weeks ago. 
When it comes to making an empty home your own, it requires unpacking old stuff and even buying new stuff. Stuff that includes furniture, clothes, cooking utensils, you name it. Luckily, my wife and I like to stick with just buying the essentials. Me even more than her. <laughs> but so many people care about filling their houses and their lives with stuff. Stuff that really doesn't matter in life. Stuff that may have earthly value. Uh, but zero eternal value. The Christian should know more than anyone else uh, that there's really only one thing in this life that matters. And that is trusting Christ and Christ alone. One of my favorite quotes is Jesus plus nothing equals everything. Let me repeat that. Jesus plus nothing equals everything. That is so true because nothing else in this life matters and nothing else can bring us into relationship with God apart from Christ. In this life, there's literally a beginning and an end to everything. Oh, yeah, 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 fine. In this life, there's a beginning and an end to everything. We get jobs, then we retire. We go on vacations. Vacation is at her. Then we come home. Uh, we get a new car. Uh, then it gets old and worn down. Uh, then we get a new car. And of course, our lives. Uh, we are born. Uh, and then we die. Uh, but Christ has no beginning. Uh, and he certainly doesn't have an end. Uh, 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 he has always existed. Uh, and always will exist. Uh, um, in a world where we all die, uh, in, uh, we must figure out who uh, is the one who died and rose again. Uh, and why alone, he is our only way back to our creator. Last week, I started a five-part sermon series. These five points are this. Grace alone. Faith alone. And scripture alone. In Christ alone. For the glory of God alone. Last week we talked about how important faith alone is to our doctrine. Faith alone and Christ alone go hand in hand. You can't have faith without Christ. And you can't have Christ without faith. It's not just faith alone that goes hand in hand with Christ alone, but instead Christ alone goes along with everything. Today we're going to dive deep and talk about 
talk about how important Christ is to our belief. How you so crave a Nima Hamna, a Yetibik, a Yetibik, the Contem. The reformers or the old pastors emphasized Christ alone at the center. At a Kum Sanako, I may hang out there, a Bible Zat, a Zak, and hang out there, you and Tangna, and what said to her. The center of their theology because scripture places Christ at the center of uh, God's redemptive plan. Okay. Men like Martin Luther. Martin uh, Men like William Tyndale. And so many others stood up to. They stood up to Christ plus works. They stood up to Christ plus other saints. Instead, we say no. We believe in Christ alone, no plus. Christ alone is the centerpiece for the whole Christian faith. Because if we get Christ wrong, then we get God wrong. Our eternity rests upon getting Christ right. Putting our faith in what he has done for us on the cross. Christ answers the question of How can a guilty sinner on earth find acceptance with a holy God in heaven? Who is he? What did he do for us? Let's look at scripture. Turn your Bibles with me to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1 verses 15 through 20. Paul says he is the son of the image of the invisible God. The firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created. Things in heaven and on earth. Visible and invisible. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things. And in him, all things hold together. And he is the head of the body. The church. He is the beginning and the firstborn. So that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all the fullness dwell in him. And through him to reconcile to himself all things. Whether things on earth or things in heaven. 
asaina rongan by making peace to kaina te asai through his blood shed on the cross pathen an apek upanti akobe athe udanga khotin khoral la na amupan before we can look at why jesus is the only way to heaven um apanam pathen me kolanga a alamna om dimnita khano we have to first understand who Jesus is. He's the firstborn over all creation. Firstborn doesn't mean his earthly birth was his beginning. Instead, firstborn over all creation states that he's always existed. In a little over a month, we'll be celebrating Christmas. Christmas, of course, is the celebration of Christ coming into the world. But again, that's not his beginning. But He has always existed because he is God. Fully man. And fully God. That came in the flesh. Before time began. He has always existed. When we're answering that question of why Christ alone, why not another way? Why him? Because for by him, all things were created, the scriptures say. Because, um, because, the author of Hebrews describes him as the radiance of the glory of God. Meaning everything that God wanted to show us about himself, he did through the person of Jesus Christ. Christ is the mere image of the Father. Uh, knowing Christ is knowing God. And knowing God is knowing Christ. You cannot know one and not the other. Let's reread those last three verses in Colossians. It says he is the head of the body. He's the beginning. The firstborn from the dead. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him to reconcile himself all things. Whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of the cross. The Lord Jesus is head of it all. He's the head of the church. He's the head of our lives. He's the head of the world. Don't look to our president or other world leaders who are in charge. But instead, look at the Lord Jesus. As he is the head. The one who is truly in charge of the world. And holds all things together. Well on earth. God was pleased to have his son represent him. 
Now today, we believers have who have trusted in his death and resurrection. We have an opportunity to represent him to the world around us. We as believers have unity in Christ. And in Christ alone. We should be thankful for the opportunity to trust in him. Represent him. And most importantly, glorify him on earth. I hope we can see that Jesus is who he claimed to be. My prayer is that knowing Christ helps us understand the character of God. This text in Colossians lays out more than his deity. Verse 20 says that it's through him, it's through his, sorry, it's, <laughs> it's through the blood that was shed on the cross. But, but all things can be reconciled. Through works? Through being a good person? Through going to church? No, through him. No, Through Jesus. The first main point to unlock in this Christ alone doctrine is that, is that it is the only way through him to have a relationship with God. There is no other way we could have a relationship with God than through Christ. Now turn your Bibles with me to 1 Timothy chapter 2. Verses 1 through 7. Paul says to Timothy, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayer, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people. For kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior. Who wants all people to be saved? And to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God. And one mediator between God and mankind. The man Christ Jesus. Who gave himself as a ransom for all people. This has now been witnessed to at a proper time. Now, 
And for this purpose, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. Ati ati a kuk benga te 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 atung sak. I am telling the truth. He he komplay na donga he. I am not lying. All pang hamla kai he. And a true faithful teacher of the Gentiles. Sil tu bi pek al tak ni katui hum katui na. The context in this passage. Is Paul telling Timothy to pray often, especially for those who are in leadership? But it's the last half of this passage that I really want to hit on. It puts to rest any other idea that there's any way back to God except through Christ Jesus. First, we see that it's God's desire for all of us to be saved. God's heart breaks for anyone who doesn't put their faith in His Son. But or trusted another way to get to heaven. He has created all of us in his image. He desires to have a relationship with all of us. And is deeply saddened when, all, when his children wander off and trust in things that try to bring joy and peace that is not Christ. Other ways could be a different religion. A different biblical character, such as Mary. Or even trusting in yourself. But what do the scriptures say in this passage? The scriptures say there is one God. Uh, and one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus. Not two mediators. Not three mediators. But one mediator. Between God and man. Christ, Christ Jesus. Christ alone. This is so important for our Christ alone belief. Because Christ is the only way to God. Not through our dead ancestors. Amni. And not on our own accord. When we humble ourselves. And we get to a point where we understand. We understand that salvation can't be found in ourselves. It's the moment when his death and resurrection has a greater meaning. God in the flesh. Who could ever measure up? No one. Yes, we know that now Christ is the only way back to God. But as we talked about last week, it's more than acknowledging Him. It's more than believing who He is like we've been looking at this morning. It's faith in his death and resurrection as he gave himself as a ransom, as the text said. 
he paid the penalty for your sins and mine. The scripture says the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life. That answers the question. How can a guilty sinner that's on a path of death because of their sin? Be led to a path of righteousness and a forgiveness of their sin. The answer is through Christ. Through Christ, that is possible. I think about how passionate Peter and John were about preaching Christ in the early parts of the book of Acts. Um, Peter in Acts chapter 4, Peter and John get arrested for the boldness of their faith. Peter and John and the preaching of Christ's death as a means of salvation. This would be very offensive to the Jewish leaders. And people of this day. As so many of them were in denial that the Messiah had come. So many are still in denial today. But Peter continues to give a speech to the rulers and the elders in Jerusalem. I want to share his closing words. This was our scripture reading today. He says, and there is salvation in no one else. There is no other name under heaven given among men. By which we must be saved. No one else. But Jesus. No other name. But the name of Jesus. I hope our hearts and I hope our hearts are convinced and our minds are convinced that this man is God in the flesh. He is the savior of the world and the only way back to God. Christ alone puts everything back together. Christ alone gives us a hope and a peace that this world and this earth cannot give. When I say Christ puts everything back together, that must mean that something was once good and then became broken. You're right. Once man and God had perfect union and harmony with one another. Together in the garden with Adam and Eve. 
Once sin came in the world through Adam's disobedience. Um, Adam, Adam, Everything started to die. Uh, and man's heart drifted further and further away from God. But at, the, but as the scriptures say, for as an atom I'll die. So in Christ will all be made alive. Another scripture says, For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. What does that mean? Through Adam's sin and death came into the world. Um, Adam, Adam, Adam. But through Christ's righteousness and life has now come in the world. Christ went to the cross. He hung there, taking all the past, present, and future sins for you and me. He paid the penalty for sin that you and I deserve. The Bible says, He who knew no sin became sin. So that we may become the righteousness of God. You didn't do this. No saint of the past has done this. But he did this. Christ. Christ alone did this. Faith alone in He, Christ alone. Is the only way back to God. The only way your sins can be forgiven. And the only way to have peace with your Creator. Once you've done this, you see that your life begins to change. You no longer live for yourself. You no longer live for your sins. But you live for Christ. To glorify Him on earth. Getting Christ right is the only thing that matters in this life. Nothing else. No other stuff. I pray that you've trusted in Christ. I pray that you have trusted in Christ alone as your only way back to God. Let us pray. Father, we're so thankful for you. We're thankful for the blood that you shed on the cross. We're thankful that he is the only way back to you. And we're thankful for the unity that we can have with other believers who have trusted that message. 
Let us pray over our fellowship time today. We give you thanks. In your glorious holy name. Amen. Amen. Are dismissed. Now we change this room into a place to eat. So this first row, stack it. That first row, bring it on stage. On the floor, there are blue dots. Tables go on the dots. The rest of the chairs go around the tables. Eight chairs to a table, okay? Thank you. Larry, please bring some food up here. Thank you.